this week on the internet is a series where I talk about all the topics I missed during the week. And first up, we have the Will Smith Nami game you definitely have not heard about. According to the studio who made it, it did horribly. In February of this year, this game only made about $300,000, which is a lot of money, but this game's budget was $140 million. So they're not really making their money back. The game itself actually doesn't look horrible. It looks pretty decent for a mobile game, especially. I haven't played it though, so maybe it's just a really bad game. But where was the advertising for this game? There's been a trend recently of companies thinking they're above advertising. Disney has done this with almost all their shows. Part of me thinks they're ashamed because they're bad. But from a business perspective, I just don't understand. We've known for years that even if you are the number one company in your field, you still have to advertise to maintain relevance. This is almost universally agreed upon. If Coca-Cola stopped advertising, Pepsi would just take over. And we know this because Coca-Cola stopped advertising during the pandemic and their sales dropped. If people don't know your product exists, of course they're not going to care. Like even though Raid Shadow Legends is a huge game now, you still see ads for it. Same with Call of Duty, Fortnite, and pretty much any product that is still popular. They all have a bunch of ad spending in one way or another. Especially Apple. Apple makes sure you only see the right advertising too. You can't even comment on Apple videos because they don't want people poisoning the well. And speaking of Apple, they're having a rough time. The Department of Justice is suing Apple because they might be violating antitrust laws. Basically, they're arguing Apple is a monopoly. They are almost 60% of the US smartphone market and the DOJ alleges they participate in anti-competitive practices. And in my personal opinion, they definitely do that. For example, you can't update Apple AirPods on an Android phone. It's impossible. If you wanted to switch to Android, you basically have to stop using all your Apple products and buy new ones. And no one wants to do that. I understand if Apple users get a better experience with Apple headphones, there are proprietary chips in the iPhone and AirPods that make them connect more seamlessly, but you should be able to update the firmware of your AirPods on an Android phone. That is just Apple being spiteful for daring to use an Android phone because it is entirely possible for them to add that functionality. Apple also refused to use RCS in the past when texting an Android phone. And to quickly explain RCS, it's just modern texting. If you have an Android, you have it. And if you have an iPhone, it's basically just iMessage. For the longest time, Apple refused to add this to the iPhone up until very recently. And the only reason Apple did not add RCS was to be spiteful. Let's be honest. There is no other reason for this except making your competition look worse. Because when you texted an Android phone for the longest time, it was just SMS, which is terrible. It is basically an ancient technology at this point. Videos are grainy, photos are grainy, and they might not even go through. Apple had this lawsuit coming for years, and I am honestly surprised it took this long. Because the US has sued companies for far less. And I know someone is thinking, but Steam is also a monopoly. How are they not being sued? And Steam is a good monopoly. In the sense that they aren't stifling competition, Steam is not trying to make your experience on Epic Games worse or shutting down reselling options. Steam just exists and it's just better. And yeah, if you buy a game on Steam, you're likely to keep buying games on Steam because it is a storefront with a game library, but it's just not the same as Apple. The only thing that Steam really does wrong, in my opinion, is their fees for selling games. I don't think Steam should really be taking a 30% cut. In fairness, they did add a program for small studios, but Steam's cut doesn't go down until $10 million in sales, and then it's a 5% drop at that level. And then for another 5% drop, you have to hit another $50 million in sales. It's just kind of a weird system. You would expect it to go the other way around. Maybe it's trying to get rid of vaporware games, but I don't know. It's kind of a weird system. But the customer on Steam is always winning. For example, Steam recently added more family sharing support. You can now play games on a family shared account simultaneously. Before, if someone was playing a game in your Steam library and you launched a game, it would kick the other person out of their game, even if it was a different game. Now that won't happen. You still can't play the same game at the same time, but that just makes sense. Either way, this does not benefit Valve at all because now people definitely are not buying two copies of a game nearly as often if they use family sharing. But there is a catch. If someone gets banned while they're playing on your copy of a game, you also get banned. So if you have a family member or a friend who cheats in games, don't let them use this. That bans don't go away. And next up, we have music made by ChatGPT. This thing is called the Suno AI. And personally, I think this is stupid because if I'm going to listen to music, I am not going to listen to some AI generated slop. The idea of it alone feels empty and soulless. And I'm not even that into music. Like I can't play an instrument or anything. This is just terrible. At least with AI art, it has provided some comedy. But this, this is just all the bad parts of AI art with no comedy. And on top of that, if this thing can generate music, why are my music recommendations so bad? You'd think they would have figured out the recommendation part before the generating music from the ether part. And if you are extremely hyped for this, I am sorry, someone in your life failed you. But something you should be hyped for is Squirrel with a Gun. This is just a funny game and it's coming out this fall. No exact date has been revealed yet, but this is just gonna be a fun novel game, kind of like Goat Simulator. It's not meant to be some grandiose game. It's just a silly little game, but something that is gonna be a grandiose game got massively delayed. Riot Games has been working on an MMO for a while, which makes sense because if you've watched Arcane, you know they're great at world building and there is a lot of lore for League of Legends. It just makes sense for them to make an MMO. It never got an official release date or anything. People just knew they were working on it. And recently they announced they are doing a full reset on the direction of the game, which makes sense. This game started development in 2020 and a lot can change within that time period. I would much rather have them delay it over releasing a game that is destined to fail. MMOs are really hard to make because you need players to maintain the game and not just a few players. You need a lot of players. That's why World of Warcraft is even still popular. It was basically the first MMO. So it has a lot of players 
and people still play it. And World of Warcraft is not some bastion of quality. It's had quality of life improvements over the years, but it's still a game that was initially designed in the early 2000s. A lot has changed since then. Trying to play World of Warcraft now as someone who didn't grow up on it is painful. And next up, we have YouTube requiring creators to mark if their content is AI generated or deep faked, which is a good step in the right direction. I imagine over time, YouTube will probably get more strict with this because no one likes it. No one likes to be deceived or lied to. So I imagine to avoid pissing everyone off, they'll eventually do something like demonetize this content. Because let me ask you, yeah, you, does watching a video made by a robot feel fine to you? Because to me, it feels like I got scammed. It's gotten to a point where if someone sounds like an AI voice, I just don't watch the video. I am a YouTuber, so I am biased for sure, but I like people talking and using their own voice to say things. And when it's some stupid robot, I don't want to hear it. And if you're insecure about your voice or something, and that's why you want to use this, don't worry about it. So is everyone else. But this new rule applies to synthetic voices, altered footage, and making real people appear to do or say things that they didn't do. The system won't be perfect, but it is better than nothing. And next up, we have Google working with Apple for their AI. This is really surprising because Apple talked a really big game about their AI. And if Google Gemini is all they have to show for their big talk, Wow, that's terrible. Google Gemini sucks. It's really behind everything else. And Apple told people they'd break new ground in generative AI. Let me remind you that Google Gemini recently would refuse to generate white people, even if it was entirely appropriate for the prompt. And next up, we have the US officially banning asbestos. I already thought this was banned, to be honest. So seeing this wasn't completely banned until recently was kind of irritating because I have been told this stuff gives you cancer since I was a child. Asbestos has still been being used in brake lining gaskets and some manufacturing applications. I am most concerned with this stuff being used in products that aren't cleaning chemicals like brake lining. Thankfully, it's banned now, or at least it will be very soon. Companies who still use it have two years to figure it out and make stuff without it. Some industries will probably switch pretty easily and others won't. One of the examples listed in this article is chlorine, the stuff used in pools. There's only eight chlorine plants in the US and they all use asbestos to make chlorine. So I don't know what they're going to do, but it does suck that asbestos is such a dangerous chemical because it actually is super useful. It can even be snow on a movie set. And speaking of movies, we have the worst cinematic universe to ever be announced. It's called the Pooniverse and it's exactly what you're thinking. It is a cinematic universe centered around the killer Winnie the Pooh. This is obviously a cash grab because the movie that is out now sucks. Like it's just not a good movie. It has no redeeming qualities. So this is going to suck. And the Star Wars Battlefront remaster also has no redeeming qualities. As more information has come out, they did nothing to make this game better than the original. It turns out some of the improvements from the first game were just straight up stolen mods. And it's not like they just stole the idea or something. Apparently they ripped all the code from the mod and they just put it in the game. The Nintendo Switch version has the exact same files as this person's mod and the exact same bugs. And that doesn't just happen by accident. The fact that the bugs from the mod are in the game is pretty good evidence in itself. It's the same reason that we know for sure Bethesda has never truly updated their game engine. The bugs in Bethesda games are the same across all their games, but the files found in the Star Wars Battlefront remaster are even dated to when the mod was made. Like they didn't bother hiding this at all. The company who remastered this game is called Aspire and they should go out of business. This game company, from my knowledge, only makes ports and remasters and they do a horrible job every time. And I will never in my life again buy a remaster or game that is exclusively published or developed by this company. I say exclusively because unfortunately they worked on Mac and Linux port for Civ 6 and I like Civ 6 because it's good. But as you'd expect, the port sucks. If you ever see a game that is remastered, published, developed by this company, whatever, at the very least, check the reviews before buying, but ideally never buy it. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, new follow me on Twitter, add spends, one click, answer, and check out more of my content and have a good one.